January 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 9 from the New Testament. After getting into a boat, he crossed to the other side and came to his own town. Just then, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Have courage, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the experts in the law said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. When Jesus saw their reaction, he said, Why do you respond with evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your stretcher, and go home. And he stood up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were afraid and honored God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax booth. Follow me, he said to him, and he got up and followed him. As Jesus was having a meal in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are healthy don't need a physician, but those who are sick do. Go and learn what this saying means. I want mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then John's disciples came to Jesus and asked, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples don't fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn while the bridegroom is with them. Can they? But the days are coming when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a patch of untrunk cloth on an old garment, because the patch will pull away from the garment, and the tear will be worse. And no one pours new wine into an old wineskin. Otherwise, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled out, and the skins are destroyed. Instead, they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. As he was saying these things, a ruler came, bowed low before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus and his disciples got up and followed him. But a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. For she kept saying to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will be healed. But when Jesus turned and saw her, he said, Have courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed from that hour. When Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players in the disorderly crowd, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but asleep. And they began making fun of him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and gently took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the news of this spread throughout that region. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, shouting, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he went into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him throughout that entire region. As they were going away, a man who could not talk and was demon-possessed was brought to him. After the demon was cast out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of demons he cast out demons. Then Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and sickness. 
When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were bewildered and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. God, you, you call every single one of us to your harvest. You actually made every single one of us to participate in your harvest, uh, to be one of those workers in your kingdom. And today I just ask that we follow that opportunity that you've provided us, that whatever that gift is that you've given us, whatever that ministry, whatever that mission opportunity is, Please allow us to not only see the opportunity today, but act on it, to do it because it is your will and because you have shown us so much grace and so much mercy and so much love. You know, some of us are going to encounter people, say, at the grocery store today, and they actually may need prayer. They may need just a smile or they may need to hear about you, God. Let us act on that call today. Some of us today are going to hear about bigger challenges you have for us. Perhaps it's a call to go on a mission, whether here locally or internationally. Perhaps it's to start a ministry or lead a Bible study or lead a small group. Whatever it is that you call us to do today, God, allow us to hear you with our hearts and obey. You know, it's interesting that this passage talks about what we do every day. We, we go to church and we spend time with other Christians and venturing outside of that comfort zone <laughs> tends to make us really uncomfortable. And, and I have never read a single passage in the whole Bible where you said we get to be comfortable as Christians. Yet we definitely tend to congregate in things that are comfortable to us. But you were really clear in this passage. You didn't come to deal with the righteous. You came to deal with the sinners and to save the sinners. And now you've called us to go out and help other people who may not have heard the good news yet, who may not understand your compassion and your forgiveness. We are called to go out and help those other people. God, today, I just ask you to help us break outside of our comfort zone of hanging around people who are already saved, of preaching to the people in church. We need to go out and we need to follow our calling. We need to be the worker in the harvest and the harvest are the people that need to be reached. God, I ask for strength today. I ask for courage today. I ask for my words to be your words today. I ask for my actions to be your actions and the love I have for people come from the love you have for me. God, thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for watching over us and taking care of us and fussing at us when we stray too far outside the area that we're supposed to stay within. <laughs> Thank you for loving us so much that you do that for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.